Well, now you all know that you're welcome to the first social of the year. I'm glad that everybody came. And I knew I was going to need help to fill up this church, especially on a Friday night. Because that's a hard night to do anything. <laughs> and I, when I need help, I always meditate. And you know what I do? I ask God <laughs> to help me. I called on God. I said, God, <laughs> you are the chairman of the board. And I'm merely a rousing young executive. <laughs> I said, God, I need a little help down here in the sales department. <laughs> and God answered me. He said, Reverend Elmo, he always calls me by my first name. <laughs> he said, Reverend Elmo, I'm sending you somebody. He said, I'm sending you somebody. Not just anybody, <laughs> but somebody. Gonna help you get the word across to the brothers and sisters. You know, I met this brother back in 19, 1959. 1959. That was the year I got my car. <laughs> I never will forget it. Of course, I didn't meet the brother in the same place I met the Lord. No, no. I met the brother in the pool room. And I met the Lord in jail. I was in there for stealing a car. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> without further ado, a man come all the way from the church of what's happening now. A man in his own right, a dear friend, Reverend Leroy. say thank you brothers and sisters I don't want to take much of your time it's just a word or two I wanted to give a little sermon that is a, ser a favorite with my congregation and it's dedicated to those who aren't working I won't go to the extent of naming names because I feel that the people who aren't working know who they are <laughs> now in order for me to make my point I must tell you the story about King Nebuchadnezzar and the Hebrew boy that is to help me make my point. You know what I mean? And I must make my point, otherwise there's no use. Preaching is a lot like shooting craps. If you don't make your point, it don't mean a thing. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylonia. They called him king of the good times. Because in Babylonia, every night was a party night. They had casinos there that never closed. There were scarlet women of all colors, showing everything they had to whoever wanted to see it. And there were a lot of big eyes in Babylonia. In Babylonia, every night was Saturday night. And the kids wouldn't go to bed when their parents told them. It was a wicked town. Wicked town. Now, a few miles down the road in Jerusalem lived the Hebrews. They worked for God. They was good. And Nebuchadnezzar was bad. And bad don't like good. Bad don't like good, does it? Y'all mm. know that. Bad cannot stand good. So he said to himself, it's itself. I believe that I will drop in on the Hebrews and give them some trouble. Mm. That's the way trouble is. It drops in on you. <laughs> you not expect just out of the sky some trouble just drops. You say, well, why is this happening to me? <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> They were right outside of town, and the voice in the middle of the night said, Halt, who goes there? That is what the boy said. It was a little Hebrew boy named Daniel. The king asked, said, What is your name? The Hebrew boy said, Sir, my name is Daniel. So he told him, My name is Daniel. Daniel was a good boy, and his mother had told him, Whenever you're speaking to your elders, say, Sir. That's why he said, He said, Sir, my name is Daniel. The king didn't like good boys. So he said, tie him up, and when we get back, I'm going to throw him to the lions. <laughs> then the king and his army marched into town and went wild. 
They shot up the place. They broke out all the windows. They tore out all the street lights. They walked all over people's gardens and they scared the children. Mm. <laughs> Can I get a shame, shame, shame? Shame, shame, shame. When he got back home, the first thing Nebuchadnezzar did was count his loot. He had captured four Hebrew boys. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro. <laughs> He also captured 15 slave girls and a solid gold dinner service for 12 that is stolen from a Hebrew temple. There was a lot of bunch of other stuff that he took too, but I don't have time to name it all right now. But a complete list of the items taken will be for sale after the service. I recommend y'all pick one up. By this time, it started to get cold in the throne room. So Nebuchadnezzar said to the guards, he said, fetch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And when the guards had brought them forth, he said unto the guards, throw these chumps into the fire. <laughs> the king didn't know that the Lord was watching. Was. The Lord was looking through the wall. <laughs> he can look through the wall. A lot of people don't know that. The Lord can look through a wall better than Clark Kent. Got <laughs> x-ray fishing. And the king Nebuchadnezzar didn't know that the Lord had come to the Hebrew boys earlier. And he told me, he said, when they get ready to throw you in the fire, do not struggle because I got you covered. That's what he told him. I got you covered. Isn't that beautiful to be covered? Truly wonderful. Truly Am wonderful. I telling the truth, Reverend Elmo? As far as I know. <laughs> and when the guards put the Hebrew boys in the fire, it sputtered and went out. The fire just sputtered and went out. Didn't send your hair on the head. I will not say that they didn't get thirsty, but the fire sputtered and went out. I want y'all to tell me what the fire did. It's it's fire. Fire. Then he said unto the guards, bring in that sucker, Daniel. We brought in Daniel and said, throw that sucker to the lion. <laughs> Isn't that outrageous? Mm. Throw Daniel. The nice little boy that said, sir, my name is Daniel. He said, to the lions with him. <laughs> Lord had come to Daniel too. He said, Daniel, when they throw you in the lions, in the cage there, don't struggle. So Daniel went in the cage and he stood there and he looked at the lion. And the lions looked at Daniel. Then the lions looked at each other. And Daniel looked at the lions while they were looking at each other. Then he looked at the king. He said, sir, the lions ain't hungry. <laughs> yes! He said, the lions ain't hungry. The king said, burly, burly, I say unto you that you're going to stay in there till they get hungry. <laughs> said, because the lions have no place to go. <laughs> the lions have no appointment. You might have a commitment from the Rams, <laughs> but the Lions have no place to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That night, the king had a mighty feast, and the king spake unto the multitude, saying, Let the good times roll. <laughs> Run that by me one more time. Let the good times roll. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> yes, and just as Nebuchadnezzar raised that cup to his mouth, the Lord stepped through the wall. Didn't bust a brick. <laughs> Stepped right through the wall and he wrote something on it. Had one of them pencils that you write on the wall with. I think they call them marking pencils. He wrote on the wall. The king said, did I see what I saw? And the multitude said unto him, We, we saw you when you seen it. Dick. <laughs> then he asked for his glasses. The king needed glasses because his vision was weak. It's like I've been telling y'all, too much sex weakens the vision. <laughs> you don't have to have good vision when you're the king, because generally the people around you see it your way anyway. <laughs> the king still couldn't read the writing on the wall, so he sent for Daniel. And he said, Daniel, read that writing. Daniel beheld the wall. He said, sir, it's a letter from the Lord. The king said, well, what does the letter say, chump? <laughs> Daniel told him, it says, dear king, I've been looking through a lot of walls lately. And I've seen what you've been doing to the people who work for me. Mm. Said, I saw you throw the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Mm. Said, I saw you throw Daniel in the lion's den. And I saw you drinking from my gold cups and the party's over. That's what he told him. The party is over. <laughs> so I say to you brothers and sisters out there who aren't working, the Lord's unemployment office is open 24 hours a day. Get a job working for the Lord. In retirement age, there's a bonus of eternal life. When you work for the Lord, he got you covered. Amen. Amen.